rebuke, the Lord rebuke the devourer. The Lord has commit, let's start over. The Lord God has created the waster to destroy, yet no weapon that is formed against the righteous shall prosper. And those that condemn the righteous shall fade away. They shall melt away as a snail in the heat of the sun. I'm talking about those kind of people that go to seminaries to become lords over the flock so that they might obtain tithes and offerings and be successful in this world of iniquity. That they might adorn their houses and their planes and their cars from the spoil of the poor as they trap men. The antithesis of what Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. They are entrapping people in bondage and they rob them from the fruit of the Spirit that is ready to be taken from the tree of life. But these people, these pastors, are hirelings. They are paid to speak lies and deceive the simple minded. They won't deceive the wise, those that have understanding, those that meditate in the law of God. Those who have and continue to deny themselves daily and take up their cross to follow Christ, they cannot be deceived because they are in Christ and Christ is not a deceiver. He is the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd gave his life for the sheep that they might inherit the kingdom of God and have eternal life. But these hirelings, these pastors, have spread themselves in a confederacy across the world and have gone into the world and gone into every home through communications, through networks of evil and deceit and they can deceive, if it were possible, even the elect. They can do that. They can deceive the elect. And the elect are those that were ordained um, to salvation from the foundation of the world. The elect are the cream of the crop of the little flock. The little flock is sheep. That follow Christ, but there still is a danger for some to fall away. Unless we endure to the end, Jesus said that blessed are those who endure to the end. Endure means, like in the scriptures where it says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul advising Timothy and all believers. And we know that enduring is suffering. It involves suffering. It involves stubbornness. To stand fast. To not waver. To not be taken away by every wind of doctrine and tossed about as the waves of the sea to not be double-minded but to be single-minded single hearted single purposed to do the will of the Father and many have received the ministry from God to perform that which is good 
and very few have taken and put their hand to the plow and gone into the harvest to reap souls because iniquity has abounded tenfold over the last ten years. And grace is upon those who have endured and continue to endure even though their friends, their neighbors, despise them. When it comes to the cross, they will tell you to come down from it. That's right. They will, they will tell you to come down from the cross. And it used to be a, more of a popular acceptance of scripture among churchians about the cross. That the validity of us denying ourselves, taking up our cross to follow Christ. But now it is a mockery. And the jumping and the jiving and the high-pitched women singing and jumping around. Rod Parsley, my goodness, looking at his services, his camp meeting services, it's so hard to stomach. I can take about two minutes of the opening part where there's Singers are jiving and jiving and moving and a booming and a dancing and a crabbing as though nothing is wrong. That as though there is no sorrow among the church. The church is grieving. The elders of the church are grieving. The ecclesia is grieving. These mockers, hypocritical mockers, they know scripture like the devil knows the scripture, like he quoted Psalm 91 to Jesus. They know the Bible, and they twist it like a serpent. Jesus said, my servants, or those that follow me, those that believe, will take up serpents. What does that mean? It means they will take them on. As these pastors appear as a snake, they're revealed by the Holy Spirit. We step on their heads. Oh yeah, we're in a war. Wake up. This is war. War for the soul. We're the, we're the very few, by we are, it's the little flock, most of the church, the ecclesia, has gone ahead. They are in heaven. They are the great cloud of witnesses watching us to see how we do. Because how they did was through persecution and affliction, through the fire and through the waters. And they came out with robes of righteousness unspotted from the world. So can you do it? Can we do it too? Well, Jesus said, unless I cut these days short, no man will be saved. And Jesus also asked, will there be any faith when I return? The faith of God is generated through the new nature, which is the new creature in Christ washed in the blood of Jesus, sanctified, holy, in the Spirit of Christ, that there is no sin in those who believe. And these signs shall follow them. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The other day I was in a small group of just three people, and one dear soul, lady, 
began to pray, and as she prayed, she began to speak in tongues. And I was sitting there, listening, and the interpretation came to me. And what was the interpretation? It was out of scripture. It was the Bible. Interpretation of tongues will always be scripture. And it was, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And as she was praying, she was crying and travailing. And then she spoke in tongues. And then the interpretation came. Now that is the Holy Spirit. And those who say, those pastors who refuse the speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, have those that stop it from happening in their congregation are anathema. They are accursed from Christ.